so earlier I asked a bunch of questions on DeviantArt about uh, color, uh, what people wanted to see or learn about color. Uh, and I got a lot of replies back, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't think I can cover it all uh, in a short video, but I think uh, that a couple things came to mind that I want to cover. Um, and, you know, I actually I sketched up some, well, they're all on top of each other. I sketched up a, a couple of. Uh, Characters. I recorded that process, but I'll upload that at, uh, later. You know, it's kind of um, animated, kind of uh, characters and poses. Uh, so I, I picked this one. I figured, you know, if I come up with something that I want to uh, explain, um, maybe I'll use her. So first thing I want to say is, um, you all are asking the right questions, um, and the and I'll kind of uh, the one thing I can recommend is to get familiar with the the full color range so uh, you have this color picker um, and you have RGB pretty much think of, think of it as RGB so you have the reds the greens and the blues and the stuff in between kind of fill up so let's just go go ahead and like kind of put a uh, a bit of a rainbow and now, when I'm selecting these colors, um, people ask me how to get like, you know, colorful things without it looking muddy. Um, if I'm going to select a, a, a yellow, um, I'm not going to select it down here because that's too dark. Yellow is actually, as it's most saturated, the most nice to look at when it's up here. Um, well, kind of like that, right? Um, let me show an example of like what a muddy, kind of desaturated version would look like right and <laughs> that's a problem we don't want that um, so next we'll have uh, the greens and you wouldn't you wouldn't go up here right because that's lime green which is fine but uh, I think the most chromatic and chromatic means most saturated is when it's at a darker value that means a darker uh, like from uh, value is referring to tone so um, the darkest value is black and the lightest value is white um, so mid value would be 50% uh, gray. So uh, green is at its most saturated around here. So let's go ahead and put that in. And go with the blue. Also saturated at a, uh, at a darker color because as you go brighter, it loses uh, that saturation. Um, it's that deep blue that works pretty well. Um, and yeah, so like back to the red. Uh, it it you know it, it's pretty saturated there, um, but compared to the yellow, it's actually way brighter. Because if we if we um, make it black and white, even though both colors are at their most full saturation, uh, red is actually darker. So keep that in mind. Because if you want red red to pop against something, that something has to be darker than it is. Because um, it's not going to be a bright gl glowing light against a bunch of yellow. In order to make red glow, you'd have to put dark colors behind it. Uh, so remember that. Uh, whoops. So next is... Um, we'll go with the, the magenta. But pretty much this is all the colors you kind of have to be familiar with. Um, because if you if you understand all of these, actually this blue is not fully saturated. It should be something like that. Um, and this is very arbitrary. This isn't some kind of uh, solid uh, set in stone thing. I'm I'm going along with this as, as I um, as I'm doing this. So where to go from now? Uh, the question I was being asked the most, I think, is how to shade. So like if you have a a red object um, our go-to thing is to if we want it, like to imply that there's light coming from the top that means the bottom half of the sphere is going to be darker so uh, actually to get the right value to get the right darkness um, the, the general rule of thumb is halfway to black so if this is the local color of the value up here the shadow side is actually halfway to black because all the way to black would be down here. You don't want to do that. It's halfway to black. Right? And it automatically just feels right. 
and if it's a sphere, it has gonna it's gonna have a core shadow like that. Um, but the thing is, uh, the problem that happens is it's not as interesting as it could be. So instead, we want to imply that there's uh, another light source coming from underneath it to uh, to make it to give more definition to it, so that you can feel all the facets. Now, um, to do that, you pick another color. So let's try blue. Um, now I'm gonna anything you draw in this layer is gonna go in. So if we were to have the blue bounce light, automatically it feels more nice okay um, now if we were to use yellow let's just actually erase that it works right but look what happens with the blue all right there's a certain pop and that's because they're almost complementary to each other uh, to be truly complementary you'd use green but I don't think <laughs> it just automatically feels too Christmassy when you uh, do that which you know that um, that might be what you want to do. Uh, so it's it's the right value, so it's darker, and also it's a different color. And we can just tone it down a bit. Um, actually, let's go ahead and change that back to blue. Ugh, that never works. Mm. Yeah, some kind of. Something like that. So that feels nice. And so what happens there is, it, although I use blue, it looks purple because it's mixing with the red. And yeah, that that's what I would recommend when you're shading any color. Uh, and this is often seen in um, animation films or uh, a lot of illustrations that want to look colorful and illustrative. Now, if we were to be doing a, I don't know, sci-fi gritty look, yeah, we would just go straight to black or whatever but I feel like this kind of approach is far more interesting to look at so let's put that aside um, and let's go through each color um, and how to shade you know how you know how you can approach shading each color so if we had yellow alright let's lock the transparency on that and if we go halfway to black right that's that works right we know that works it especially if we were to drop a shadow underneath but okay another thing so here's a shadow but the local color of the ground is white so it should be halfway to black of the white to have the correct value of the shadow so now it looks like it's floating we did that in two seconds it's all you need to know um, but again this sphere could look more interesting as as it is right now it's fine it's it's acceptable but I think um, I think my go-to color is going to be blue, um, but watch what happens when we do this. All right, it adds dimension to it, uh, and then you can make the shadow that color as well. Maybe add a little bit of light. And now it feels like it's outside in the sun. This is called ambient bounce light. Uh, I think, yeah, I went to art school, so that's that. Oops. Let's put that aside. Let's get rid of that shadow. And we'll go with green. And I'm just going to speed through this. So, okay, so, all right, so this is a bit trickier because it's lower already. Now, the halfway to black for this is somewhere around here. It's not down here, it's not up here, it's literally halfway to black because, uh, Full way to black would be over here, but no, we want halfway to black. And by the way, I know this because of uh, Scott Robertson's teaching. I uh, had his class over at Art Center, and he has a book that covers this specifically. Um, it's, uh, there's how to draw, how to render. Uh, check it out. I'll put the link in the description. So, yeah. Um, let's try a different color Let, uh, instead of blue. Um, maybe... Maybe... Uh, yellow dark yellow orange yeah okay okay so what happens here is it, it, it got uh, brighter 
but it, it, it still works because it doesn't have to be too dark. As long as it, it causes some kind of contrast, uh, we have it working for us. Put that aside. Hey. It's a traffic light. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, blue. Okay. So halfway to black. Also, you can go up here um, and if you want to be more specific. So it's at 99% it's uh, brightness. B stands for brightness. S is saturation. If you're looking up here at the top right. And you go 50% to the black. That is the most accurate way you can go halfway to black. Look at that. That's all you need to know. Now this is implying that there's a light source uh, from above. Sometimes you, you don't have that and you're working with a more subtle uh, shift in uh, values. But right now I'm keeping it as basic as possible. Um, so let's add uh, orange because orange and blue go great together. Just look at <laughs> a lot of concept art these days. Uh, so, and tone it down a bit, and you can imply that it's glossy. Let me just do a quick demo. If you want to make it look like it's a shiny ball, you can add a, a layer of clear coat or gloss by putting a kind of an airbrush gradient. Let's see, how did it? Yeah, something like that. I, I, it, it's been a while since I had that class, but um, it's something like this. A lot of logos like to do this stuff, but at the edges they would be more uh, warping, something like that. And you can kind of just... Now it's like it's reflecting some kind of uh, sunrise that's behind us. And, and on top of that, you can put studio light hotspot. And now, now it looks like a, well, that's a pretty bad job, but you get the idea. Um, so that's blue and magenta. So magenta, I think, is a special color for me. Uh, because it, the the realm of magenta, you have a lot of nice like jewel like colors, like a lot of um, rupees, right? From Zelda, have this kind of range of uh, colorful, vibrant stuff happening, and and I add a blue to it, and look how nice it looks. Um, and here, let me find a color wheel real quick. Okay, found a color wheel. So there's something called complements, and if you know nothing about color, here's a quick breakdown. Uh, if you have a color here, the complement of this color is up here. It's directly opposite. So earlier when I said orange and blue go together very well, it's because they're complements, right? Um, and you know, purple and what the oh, purple and yellow, red and green. Remember I said red and green go together very well. It's because they're complements. Um, and the thing about orange and blue, or blue in general, is it works with almost everything because we're used to seeing that outside. We can go outside during the day and in the shadows they will have, uh, I mean, yeah, in, in the bounce light it's sky blue. So that's why it works pretty well. Let's turn that off and save it just in case we want to use that later. So let me kill this. So, if, I mean, if we were to look at this, it, like for each one of these, we sort of invented a color palette because from this we can uh, build off of it because we can say, oh, we have the blues, we have the magentas, the, the fully saturated magentas, um, right? And that's, that's a start. Like you can make an entire painting just with these three colors. Um, and that actually... Uh, it has a lot to do with something called a triad, which I'll have to get into maybe later. Um, but from here, you can even expand on it. You can say, oh, well, I like this blue, but it's not enough. Maybe we can add some more 
variations of that blue, right? And then with the this purple or magenta as well, like maybe you want to go darker or even redder, more red. But but the but the key is um, I'm not straying too far from the original color. So I I, I shifted the value when it made it lower, and I pushed it up a bit on on this scale here. Now I can go up or down. But if I was to go all the way over here and did that do something like that, it sort of it works, but it's not within the the direct color harmony. Um, and I think I also want to add another blue, maybe something warm. Um, warm and cool is a very uh, interesting thing so in in front in this left um, swatch we have a pretty good range of blues because you have the the desaturated um, uh, cool versions and then you have the fully saturated warm and maybe maybe I'll use this uh, palette for something um, so you can get an idea of it later okay wait um, and yeah so like for this middle one we started going red let's uh yeah like a warmer tone but let's make it darker but more saturated so you know you have these jewel like rupee gem colors, uh, I think they're lovely. All right, so let's put that aside over here with its respective ball. Boring, boring, boring. Okay. Um, see, looking at this, uh, you could build a whole uh, color palette from it. Um, you got blue. You got the orange, and it's it's not as fun to me as the, as the one up top but we can make it fun so we can push the saturation of that orange and we can also make a dark version but if we go dark it looks gross and muddy so that's when we have to shift uh, value so that we can have some saturation and let me talk about that before I continue with this ball um, and it's something called well I mean I call it uh, stair stepping and the best example I can tell you is um, if you were to draw a flame alright let's say that's a flame it's the best flame you've ever seen that is a fact uh, the thing is like <clears throat> alright let me just do it wrong right okay a flame gets brighter in the center okay we know this and it gets even brighter as you go to the center but what's wrong here is the colors are all off um, we know a flame is warm but as it gets brighter it actually changes color at least in, in most uh, illustrations so the right way to do it let me just put that next to it is to stair step in value and hue so you know here's the new flame it's a bit brighter than um, the other one as I started so if I and I know it goes brighter so okay let's go brighter but it loses saturation okay um, because when you add white to something it gets cooler uh, or especially with red it just loses that saturation to keep saturation you shift the hue up with it alright so with this I would pick orange alright see how much better it already looks and let's make that fully saturated and the next step you guessed it it's yellow so using these three colors we stair stepped to have something look vibrant now you can use this mentality for anything uh, you can stair step when you're changing colors so it's like this up here on the top left you know we have this blue but as we got brighter it shifted right whoops why is it doing that? Okay. Right? So stair step. It's not all the same hue. It's shifted either to be warmer or cooler as it gets brighter or darker. Okay. Alright. Let's uh, 
get rid of these flames. All right, so having said that, man, I feel like we're all over the place with this uh, tutorial. I, I didn't really structure it, but hopefully you can um, pick up on some things that are useful. So if we were to go brighter, we want to go yellow. Stair stepping. And with this blue, if we want to go darker, we could do that, but we could also shift the hue, which is what we like to do up in here. And then as we go brighter, we could go brighter, but we could also, again, shift the hue. And that, that's sort of a start of a color palette. And even when you start painting with this stuff, uh, you can um, let it grow and change the colors as you go. But like, it, it's important just to start with something. Um, so yeah, um, the, the most important things to, to remember are the RGB, so red, green, and blue. And then from those, it stems uh, these colors, the magentas, the yellows, um, etc. So with with the red ball, we have red, and if we were to go darker, and then shift the hue, well, maybe something like that, and. You could shift the hue and actually go brighter for the shadow side of it. Because actually that's what's already happening here. Um, and the, <laughs> the frustrating thing about red is, like we, like I showed you earlier, you can't go bright with red because it's already um, pretty dark at its full saturation. Because if you go bright, you, you just get pink, right? Um, which is, you know, if you're looking for that, it's fine. But you would have to go to yellow to maintain saturation. Yeah, that, that's fine. So this is just an exercise where you can uh, build uh, color palettes. And let's borrow from there and add some blue and make things interesting. And look, it, it sort of already makes its own little painting. Like you could, I could, you know, frame this and <laughs> watch it become like a, a landscape painting, right? And you can use uh, the darks to be the trees in the foreground, right? Um, you have the red sky, sunset. Um, you have the, the blue, I don't know, ground. Maybe it's an alien planet. But, but the point is you, you have a color palette and you can you know, uh, uh, sorry, it's hard to paint and talk at the same time. Um, you can really go places with it. But if you remember stair stepping, you remember uh, color harmony. Oh, I didn't even talk about color harmony. So, color harmony, basically, the trick is um, every square inch of your painting should, one way or another, include all the colors um, that you have. So, if you have yellow over here, you should have bits of yellow. Um, elsewhere just you know this is a bit obvious but um, I mean you could hide it like that but but like you know just sneaking a little bit of yellow everywhere all right and then sneaking red everywhere and even in the light because um, you have blue down here but you don't have blue up here so and, and if you do put blue up there it's too dark so what do you do you make it a brighter blue like even though it's it's so subtle Look at all. The, look at the difference it makes. Uh, it makes that little area pop. And so, for when you're coloring your characters, when you're coloring your landscapes or environments or whatever, just keep this in mind um, that uh, all the colors in the painting painting should bleed everywhere. And then that promotes color harmony. So blue, orange. And it are you know if you've ever seen impressionist paintings like Monet, um, all that, all that fun stuff. This is kind of the the foundations that they use. So, yeah, you know we, we just like 
you can do that. <laughs> it's, I just showed you how. It's very easy. Um, just keep in mind those uh, processes. So let's let's kind of mess around and um, try and take what we learned and apply it to maybe this drawing over here. Uh, and I like this color palette, so I'm gonna use that. All right, you come over here. Thank you. And okay, so we have that on a layer. I, by the way, I have no idea what I'm. I, I mean, what I mean is, I, I don't have a plan or anything. I'm just going with the flow. And if you saw my other video, you you saw that I like to start with a bit of an underpainting. I don't always do this. I sort of become <laughs> sort of a, a style chameleon. Like I'm jumping between so many different things. Um, but doing this allows us to establish uh, a base so that remember when I talked about color harmony this uh, automatically uh, injects that red everywhere so I could go in there and delete or erase out things for the silhouette but um, that's kinda tedious sometimes I'm just gonna do it really rough to get the point across Okay, so there's that. And what next? I don't know. Well, we established this color palette, and people ask me about skin tone. Well, you could, you know, you know, follow the conventions, and be like, oh, well, skin tone is this, right? Or it's like it's this color right here because I color picked it from another painting. Well, you could do that, and it works. But if you want to be interesting and put push the envelope, um, instead of just going with that, maybe you can start with this color, right, uh, for the skin, and uh, and then maybe add, and, and for the sake of color harmony, right, like we talked about, uh, let that bleed everywhere, and, and just kind of scribble on top of everything. And this is a very organic process for me. It's not like, I mean, I've seen people do lasso selections and uh, <laughs> filling them in like cell shading yeah I, I don't like doing that um, I mean maybe if I had a specific line drawing and I wanted to be very specific but right now I, I like the painterly approach um, so we're establishing color harmony right now and this is based on the color palette that we invented uh, that stemmed from was it magenta um, so magenta was the foundation, the base, the beginning, uh, the genesis of what we're doing right here. Um, but but it's important though to because if you were to just use the magentas and the reds, then it, it'll be okay. But if you introduce the blues, you uh, have a far more interesting piece. Um, so. So now we want to make like if you if you might look at this and say well we want to make it you know more realistic or interesting or whatever um, I think now we can introduce that peach light color um, and the way I would do it is select the red that's already in here right and then I would move from that so I'd shift upward and maybe go with this and you could have just picked that but. I like to f to feel like I'm starting from somewhere, um, and then look, yeah, maybe we want a more warmer color. Yeah, let's erase that. So yeah, trial and error, um, and you know you might say, well, you're just covering up everything you just did. Well, not really, because it's still bleeding through it with uh, some of the dots, not dots, the yeah, the little the little holes that happen because of the brush. And again, this is a, a default brush that's in Photoshop. Uh, I for the line work, I just used the round brush. I didn't use anything special. Please don't ask me for more brushes. They're just the default. There's nothing special. Uh, well, I'll, I'll put them up online uh, soon. But really, there's nothing special with my brushes at all. They're just. I mean, these are all, all these on on the right. I, I rarely use they're just 
stuff I found on the internet that I found interesting, but really it's just a few brushes um, that I jump between. Um, so, okay, I'm already breaking my rule, so we want this orange to be seeping and bleeding every, everywhere, so we have to abide by that. Okay, so I'm not I'm not like adhering to a very specific color scheme. I'm only starting with one and letting it grow into something, grow into something. And maybe um, we can introduce these dark magentas, right? And maybe her hair. Oh, I love this kind of color palette. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So she has uh, maybe blue pants, or maybe the highlight is blue. And then, you know, you might wonder, well, what about lighting and shading? Well, as we have it right now, we could, you know, go into each moment, you know, not moments, each uh, section and, you know, color pick it and go over here and make it brighter and shift the hue and do that and it works right um, but another method I like to use here actually let's um, do that over here too so we pick this and let's instead of going brighter let's put the shadow in um, so halfway to black that would be around here somewhere and you can go directly down but you'll lose saturation so I like to go towards the bottom right corner you know that would be halfway to black right and you can, much like spheres, um, those of us who are perverted like to make these very round, etc. Um, and I use the airbrush to kind of soften that core shadow. And so that, I mean, it's happening, you know. Uh, so the trick I like to do um, is a good old one-two punch. What I'll do is take this layer, and look how it looks pretty interesting just without the lines. Um, Anyway, so I'll duplicate it, right? So now there's two layers. And for the for the copy, I go to Levels, and I make it bright. Uh, you know, like doubling up on the brightness on it. So in a, as a comparison, one is definitely brighter than the other. And I'll go ahead and turn the, uh, the mask on. So I'm holding Alt, and I'm pressing this at the bottom right. And now it's there. So anything I paint on this layer with white, becomes bright. Anything I paint with black on this layer takes it away. So in a way we can turn on a spotlight. Let's say we want to um, make the face brighter. So it's it's automatically it's it's keeping the, the same color harmony and it allows you to do something like that. And I'm just you know loosely painting uh, the high light areas um, you know, maybe uh, since the leg is like a cylinder, it's going to have a cylindrical highlight. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, you just kind of you work from there. And by the way, so this right here, if we were to take this and uh, put that in any painting, this is called a high key color palette because um, you have all these colors and one is. Uh, and as they get darker, they change in hue. Uh, or those of you that don't know what hue means, it's this thing, this bar on the on the right. Hue means like local color. Uh, so, yeah, you can take this and make a whole painting just just with these colors, and you know, mix them around and uh, whatever. And, and and all the colors are there but it all started from one one color and uh, shifting and adding and subtracting no there's no subtracting I, I just added that because it sounded good um, so yeah that, that's kind of the the main things I want to talk about for color um, but but since we branched out from the magenta it's all in the same color family and uh, we can take any of these colors that we have on the left and put it anywhere and it'll feel like it's right. Right? Right. Good. 
and it already feels like some kind of a video game character, RPG, um, maybe like Final Fantasy, you know, the good ones when they actually look like awesome colorful illustrations instead of high, <laughs> highly realistic boy bands, gothic, like, ugh, screw you, FF15. Uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of uh, heat for that. Sorry. But it looks boring. Sorry. It, no, you know, I'm not sorry. It just... Games these days are... more tech demos than actual fun experiences. I'm, I'm jaded. <laughs> All right. But I digress. So, um, from here, if we want to talk about what to do next, I, I would lower the, the line work down. Because I like to paint on top of that so I made a new layer on top of the line work and um, you know maybe I would uh, put some shadows so like okay I want a shadow under the chin on the neck so I, I select the neck okay the color that's on the neck it's up here and the shadow is like we've discussed halfway to black right um, but we also want to shift the hue a bit so I made it more red and watch what happens. See that? Now it feels like a right shadow. Um, now let me show you how it would look if I did it wrong. Alright, I selected that color and I <laughs> go, I don't know, halfway to black but in, in this direction and I don't change the hue. Ugh, muddy. Right? One of these looks good and one of them does not because one of them maintains color and the other does not. Um, so we can use this for the other shadows, um, at least the ones that are on the skin, because the shadows on, let's say, the hair are going to be different. So let's select the hair color and go halfway to black towards the right and maybe shift it towards blue. So we'll go down. Right, so that's the shadow side of the hair. So you see how that's working? And it's it, once you get it, it's so simple. There's no, it, it, I guess it's a trick, but um, it's so like useful. Um, all right, so I want to add some some darks in the face. Now we did already establish this this dark, right? But it doesn't really look right because the face is really bright. So we want to put this here. Let's make a new layer. And, but we want a bright version of the same color. So we'll take that color and just go up. And we might not even have to shift it, but uh, now we have a brighter color that's within this relative range. So now we can do this. Add blush, you know, makeup, whatever. And we know it's in the same color harmony because we, again, branched out from the magenta and built on from there. All right, so I mean, this this uh, is very loose and messy. I would probably have done it um, much better if I wasn't trying to explain uh, at the same time. But yeah, that's um. I'm just gonna wrap this up real quick and post it because uh, I need to go to bed because I got work in the morning. Designing some stuff to work. Actually, we have to. We have to play video games for four hours at work every day from now on. It's going to suck. I know it's like, wait, you're playing video games for your job? Um, I'm like, yeah, but it's uh, it's beta testing. I mean, the, even like we as the concept artists have to partake in it. And it, the reason I'm, I'm dreading it is because I, I'm not very good at the game. Um, I don't really, I'm not really into MMOs, but anyway. Um, so this, let's go back to this neck value here. Um, and I noticed that it, it sort of, it works, but I also think it strayed from the the uh, hue family a bit. So I'm just going to sneak in some of that magenta in there. Yeah. 
Yeah, now it's right. Okay. Um, oh yeah, we gotta make the uh, elf ears all warm. Oh, so if you're if you're ever painting or drawing ears, um, and there's light behind it, um, you can always imply that there's a subsurface scattering. You know, when your ears glow and there's a light behind it, it always looks nice. Oh, maybe it's not working too well there, but yeah, I think uh, I think that's a start. No, I don't want to find it, but. Also, what you can do is uh, select the silhouette that you already made and fill it in like that. And smoosh it down using the free transform tool, and there you got a shadow. Oh, this is a mess. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyway, I think that about wraps up what I wanted to say and you know sorry it's all over the place and it wasn't very structured um, but I think I covered the stuff that uh, I wanted to say and I'll build on top of that more later but right now uh, th these are the basics that I I'm, I'm kind of also testing the waters to see if people can receive this very well um, uh, otherwise, I, I don't want to <laughs> waste your time, and you're sitting here watching this movie for f movie, this tutorial for 40 minutes, and not learn anything because of incompetent communication on my end. But yeah, so I'm getting carried away. I'm having fun. I do the do da. All right. Yo, it's like 2 a.m. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Ta-da! Cool, man. All right. I hope you like this. And if you did, um, please subscribe to the channel um, because the more subscribers I get, uh, there's something in my brain called the limbic system that shoots off, uh, I think, some kind of uh, uh, happy uh, element. What is it? Like a, It's like a gratification thing. It's like, yes, another subscriber. Yay. Um, also, like the Facebook page because, again, the more uh, I the more people I see engaging uh, in, in this, like the more I can do. Because uh, uh, I'd like this to grow so that I can share this stuff with as many people as possible. And the way that happens is if you also share. So, you know, do me a favor and just go ahead and, uh, you know, like the page, you know, subscribe to the YouTube, you know, and stuff. Just, yeah. All right. You guys have a good night. Well, good morning if you're watching. The morning, good afternoon if you. Ah.